we are. It's the beginning of record row. Crossing 14th Street and Michigan. Passing what used to be Constellation Records. The old hospital. Next door to that is VJ Records. Conveniently, it's located across the street from a Harold's Chicken. So, I can get a little lunch and talk about the vlog of VJ Records. Start there. Let me go in and get my food. Harold's Chicken. Pretty popular here in the in Chicago, in the South Side. Some on the West Side. It's just like New York's Kennedy Chicken. Yum yum. As I sit across the street from the former VJ and later Brunswick Records. Oy. Well, that was a great meal. Now on to VJ. Who's recorded with VJ? Well, with VJ, you have songs like uh, well, the artists would have included people like the Spaniels, Jimmy Reed, and uh, Good Night Sweetheart is the song from the Spaniels. Um, Baby, What You Want Me to Do, Jimmy Reed. Another VJ artist would have been Z Clark. D. Clark uh, did raindrops, raindrops and Hey Little Girl. Um, must be raindrops falling from my eyes. You know the song. Um, uh, let's see, who else would have recorded that uh, VJ artist? Is that D. Clark? Uh, Gene Chandler? The Duke of Earl? The Four Seasons also record, uh, uh, was on the label. The big girls, big girls don't cry. And uh, walk like a man. Those were the Four Seasons. Those were uh, white groups. VJ. There's a lot of noise. VJ was uh, incorporating different acts into their label white groups, black groups, it didn't really matter as long as they were making the money. Uh, as I stated in the first law, VJ was black owned by a husband and wife couple. The wife, uh, the name, um, his name was Vivian. Vivian was a, uh, actually worked at the Club de Lisa in my research. But the name VJ comes from Jimmy and Vivian, that was the husband and wife couple. V for Vivian and J for Jimmy. Now, in addition, after it was VJ, uh, it became Brunswick. And with the Brunswick label, you would have had Major Lance. Major Lance was a boxer. Which is Major Lance. And he would recorded Monkey Time, if you remember that. Uh, VJ had issues, financial issues, uh, trying to grow too soon. Too soon. They had opened an office in California. And ultimately, um, they weren't able to pay all their bills and royalties. So, uh, they had to fold. You can imagine growing so much. They have all these great artists. And they're the first in America to sign the Beatles. Originally, that album didn't sell well initially when it was released. Uh, but if you look at that album now, if you try to find it, it's at least 200 bucks on eBay. I also, I also forgot on VJ, you also had, and this is an exclusive, there were 
to the other artists as well on the label. But this is some of the known ones, uh, well known. You had uh, uh, Jerry Butler as well. Your precious love. Zoom in on this and that shit will fucking fold so fast. Not really sure if they did all the recording here or if they had a, another place where they recorded, but this is this is where where they all recorded. Jerry Butler, Four Seasons, Gene Chandler, D. Clark, the Spaniels, Jimmy Reed. They all affiliated with DJ Records. Noticing from looking at the older photos, there used to be gargoyles on this building, on the little steps on each end, over the fifth one, there was two gargoyles on each side, not there anymore, but currently it's overflow coffee. Uh, in the first vlog, I mentioned the wonderful records again. And uh, I'll mention this was the uh, five of the Dutons recorded. We're on the label of Wonderful Records with Shake a Tail Fellow. A little more on Wonderful Records. There's a story that the Jackson Five used to practice here. They used to haul in the in the car or from uh, Gary, Indiana and come here and, uh, and practice and get more training. That's a story online that I read. Ed Silvers uh, made it, who uh, made it possible. Oh great, get out of the way, Vince. She's not trying to advertise for you. But uh, there's a story online that the Jacksons will come here after school and work on their, uh, their craft. Ed Silvers, who wrote the song, Big Boy Made It Possible. He had some affiliations with the uh, wonderful records. So if that's true, Jackson 5 would have been here every week. And I think the story says they were recorded, or not recorded, but we're here every every day I think after school really putting in time like professional musicians but by this time they were already good at what they what they what they did wonderful records and along with that story it, it says that they cut a uh, it's possible that they cut another uh, album of Big Boy not for release necessarily but okay a closer shot because a uh, truck parked in front but the story goes about three or four times a week the whole fa the family would come here the boys the, the, even the mother, Miss Jackson, would come. And of course, Joseph, and they would come here and three, four times a week after school. There's a guy named a guitarist, Larry Blassingame, who was told to actually help Jermaine keep his bass from booming. So maybe this is where Jermaine learned a little bit about of, uh, how to stop your bass from booming. Interesting. But that story's online. I'll uh, post a link to it. chess building become a beautiful loft building now okay this is part two as you remember from the first one we visited this location before this is chess last building chess records chess lofts it is now we were able to get inside on the first vlog and uh, part one and check it out but this one I just want to talk about the artists you know, on the label and the songs that would have come out of these labels. Uh, Chess, Chuck Berry, and of course this is on the sign that's on Michigan Avenue, the plaque that they talk about it, but Chuck Berry would have recorded Maybelline, Bo Diddley, Who Do You Love, uh, uh, 
Hey Bo Diddley. What else did you have? Minnie Ripperton. You had Etta James. Something's got a hold on me. The Dells. Oh, what a night. Uh, who else? Billy Stewart sitting in the park. Fontella Bass. Come on, baby, and rescue me. Issues came about later. We're talking about Chess owning everything from the artist and the artist getting very little. Typical story you hear among artists of not being paid. Chess was owning everything, the publishing of the artist. The artist fought back. He wanted to get out of this type of situation. It's not really good for the artist. The artist is the creator of all of this. The artist should be getting in my opinion, most of the money. Anyway, you had people like uh, Curtis Mayfield wanting to leave the label and start his own. So that's where Curtom label comes from. Curtom was Curtis Mayfield's label. You remember Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. So you had more more black artists trying to own their music and take full control. Even today you hear about it like, or uh, when Prince was around, owning their music. And why not, they should. I'm not trying to advertise for FedEx. Believe it or not, it, it, Chess was bought by an audio tape company. Record Row started to end in the mid-70s. I guess Chess was probably one of the last ones. But recording, the business of recording black music became a huge money maker. The early rock and roll and then the soul. The record industries were making so much money. Bigger, big businesses and other outside businesses had to get involved. It's money. And what happened? You had these bigger companies, not even record companies, taking control and buying the industry, taking control of all of that money. It's big business in records recording. And that's what happened. Record Road just slowly went away. Like I said, this one is ultimately wound up, Chess wound up in a, an audio tape company. We have similar things today going on. Businesses buying other businesses for, for profit. Well, that was what was going on. Thanks for watching this episode, vlog number 14. The, uh, the moral of this vlog is pay the artists like they should be paid. Catch you on the next one.